Hello everybody and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be doing a video that was, <clears throat> I guess, kind of inspired or something like that by a video that Zach D did a little bit ago about some of his unpopular opinions relating to uh, rock and metal and stuff like that. So today I figured I would kind of do a video sort of similar to that. So there's a couple things I want to say first. First of all, some of these are more or less unpopular than others. Some of these are kind of not necessarily unpopular, but uh, it seems like uh, I talk about a couple of specific bands in this video, and it seems like sometimes the fans are fairly split on a couple of the things I'm going to talk about, but um, they're just things that I feel like are uh, not necessarily shared by the majority. This also has uh, applies to my audience. Some of these are more unpopular in general, and others are more unpopular with some of the people that watch my videos that I have talked to in like the comments and stuff like that, uh, that I just thought was kind of interesting uh, with how some things my audience disagrees with me about and other things uh, they don't or, you know, stuff like that. Pretty much I have 10 of these, they're not in any particular order or anything like that. Five of them have to do with a particular band or particular bands, I guess, because they are different. And then the last five are kind of more general, they're not about any band in particular, although I might use a band as an example. So first things first um, is about the band Starset, uh, which is one of my favorite rock bands. What I have here is that I believe that Vessels is better in pretty much every way than Transmissions. Um, this is one of those ones where the fan base seems pretty split, because uh, it seems to me that kind of my audience and the kind of community of YouTube people that we all kind of have uh, generally thinks Transmissions is better. However, it, uh, from what I've seen on like uh, other places online and on Reddit and stuff like that, the fan base is pretty split down the middle on which album is better. I think this is kind of interesting actually, but um, I personally prefer Vessels for several reasons. I just enjoy the style and the sound of it more. Um, I think it has generally um, some of Starset's best songs on it, like Ricochet, Monster, Unbecoming, uh, Satellite, Die For You, and Everglow, most of which I believe are better than the best song on Transmissions, which in my opinion is Halo. And even though there are a couple of songs on here that I don't really care for that much, like It Has Begun and Telepathic, uh, generally, I do think that um, the album overall is better than Transmissions. Second one I've got here is about the band Red, which many of you probably know is one of, if not my favorite band. Um, and uh, for them, I have that um, Gone, their most recent album, is one of their best. Personally, I would put it third place behind Of Beauty and Rage and Innocence and Instinct. Um, although those two albums are very close too. I feel like this album uh, both before and after release got some uh, hate for kind of evolve. well, some might argue changing, some might argue evolving, they mean sort of the same thing, but to me they're different. Uh, changing or evolving red sound uh, to include more electronic elements and stuff and uh, things like that. And while I do certainly generally prefer red sound, uh, present on, like I said, Innocence and Instinct and Of Beauty and Rage, uh, I do still think that Gone is a very good album. And the whole electronics thing is going to tie into something that I mention later on in this video, but um, I think generally it's still a very good album. Uh, the songs still sound very much like Red. Um, even some of the more uh, electronic focus songs like Unstoppable and Gone um, still, to me, Although you could argue that Unstoppable doesn't have so much since it is a cover, but uh, the title track at least to me still feels very much like a Red song, and I've said a few times that I believe Gone is what Release the Panic was meant to be, but what Re Release the Panic failed to be. So yeah, that's that one. I think Gone is one of Red's best albums. Thirdly, this may or may not uh, annoy a few of the people that watch my channel. I really have no idea. Uh, I know for a fact the one after this probably will. But, um, this one is Breaking Benjamin is a little overrated. Now don't get me wrong, I really like Breaking Benjamin, in fact their newest album, Ember, is within my top three albums of the year at the moment. 
and I do enjoy their music quite a lot, but I do think that there are a couple of better rock bands than Breaking Benjamin, at least Red. I think Red is better than Breaking Benjamin. Starset, uh, I prefer Starset, personally, but um, I can definitely, uh, as far as, you know, quality and stuff like that, I, I would say they're about the same, even though I personally prefer Starset, if that makes any sense at all. But I do think this is a really great band, and they have a lot of great albums and great songs, but I do think they um, are a bit overrated. That's pretty much all I have to say about it. I can't really explain why I think they're overrated, because I really don't know. I just feel like they are. And that ties into the next one, which is that their album Phobia is also a bit overrated. Many people say this is Breaking Benjamin's best album to date. Uh, personally, I disagree. Uh, I mean, before Ember came out, my favorite was Dear Agony, and my second favorite was probably Phobia. Um, but now Phobia is my third favorite, and Ember is my number one, Dear Agony is my number two. And Phobia is still a really great album, but I just enjoy it less consistently than uh, both Ember and Dear Agony. I feel like it has a few of Breaking Benjamin's weakest songs on it, uh, particularly Here We Are, and you. I don't really care too much for either of those songs, um, but it also has a few of their best. Uh, so it kind of balances out a little bit, but I still think that it is a tiny bit overrated at least. Next, and this is the last one that has to do with any band in particular, is that the band Skillet is also overrated. Uh, I feel like my audience will generally agree more with this one than uh, about Breaking Benjamin, but um, Skillet is a band that I got into pretty early on uh, at least when I started getting into rock music and stuff. They were one of the first bands, along with Red and Breaking Benjamin, that I got into. And I really liked them back then, but since then, um, my enjoyment of their music has kind of decreased, I guess. I still think they're pretty good. Um, I think their most recent album, uh, Unleashed, was quite good. I would say it's, um, either that or Comatose is probably my favorite album by Skillet. Um, however, you know, things like uh, Awake, their album Awake, which is like their most popular album, um, I could have made another point for that one, but I decided not to. I think that is an, a hugely overrated album, and Rise, the album after it, was good. I think it was better than Awake, probably. Still not necessarily their best, I think. Collide is also quite good. I haven't listened to a whole lot before Collide. I think overall the band is kind of overrated. So now, more on to the general kind of ones, and the first one I have is a band being somewhat generic or typical in their style or subgenre or whatever is not necessarily a bad thing. And I say that because uh, some bands that are very generic and typical of their genre I think are not that great, um, but other ones are. Um, for example, I would say that, um, like I mentioned earlier about Breaking Benjamin and uh, Skillet, I guess, too, those are, to me, very uh, typical modern rock bands. Uh, but I still think both of them uh, are fairly good. Same thing with um, As I Lay Dying, a metalcore band. Um, I think they're the best, at, at least the second best, if not the best one out there. I'm not sure because I really like August Burns Red as well, but they are kind of, when it comes to melodic metalcore and, you know, bands like them, Kill Switch Engage, August Burns Red, uh, that lean more towards the melodic side of things, I guess, uh, then they are kind of one of the more typical bands, probably because they were one of the kind of founders of it, I guess. Well, not, I don't know if that's right, the right word to use, but uh, they were one of the first big bands in that uh, style. However, I do think they're a little bit typical for it, but that does not mean they're bad at all. And there are other bands too, like I think, um, for example, bands like Immortal and Dark Funeral are pretty typical for black metal bands, but Immortal I think is uh, one of, if not the best black metal band out there. And speaking of black metal, that brings me into my next one. Uh, so many great segues here, I know. Um, and that is, um, this one is more for my particular audience and the people that watch my videos and whatnot, uh, and, uh, that is that black metal is one of the best metal subgenres. Now, I understand that it's not for everybody, um, I personally really didn't like it that much before I got into it, um, and it is also a bit 
um, of an acquired taste. It took me a little while to really get into it, I guess. Um, but now that I have got into it, it is one of my favorite subgenres of metal. Actually, overall, I would probably say it's within the top three. And there's not really any particular reason for that. Um, I just really enjoy how it sounds, and a couple of my favorite bands are black metal bands, like I said, about Immortal. And um, Doom of War Gear, if you count them as black metal, they're technically not as much now as they were back in the 90s. Um, but if you still count them as a black metal band, since they do ha still have uh, several elements of it, then they count too, I guess. I also like Behemoth and uh, bands like that. So yeah, I just, I really like black metal. That's pretty much my unpopular opinion for that. Next up is another one that I think generally people who listen to rock and heavy metal are a little bit split on. Some people are more accepting of it than others. And um, that is that electronics and synths in rock and metal are not necessarily bad. Now again, I understand that it's not a, uh, everybody's taste, I guess. Not everybody likes uh, electronics and stuff like that in their music. Some people prefer for it to just not have any at all, which I guess is fine. I used to be that way very much, actually. Uh, I didn't really like music as much, or at least within... Uh, rock and metal if it had synths and electronics in it. But since then I've become much more accepting of it, uh, probably I would say since 2016-ish. Uh, I started being more okay with it, I started accepting and enjoying more bands because of it. And I guarantee you that if I had heard uh, Red's album Gone or Star Set back in like 2014-2015, um, of course, Starset only started in 2015 and Gone didn't come out till 2017, but if I could have heard those bands at that time, trust me, I would have hated them. But since then, uh, my music taste has, I guess, expanded a little bit. Uh, it's not quite as expanded as I like to, it to be yet, but um, I'm a little more tolerant of electronics and stuff like that, and I don't think they are necessarily bad. Uh, I think synthesizers and stuff like that is an instrument just like any other uh, because usually it is. It's played on like an electric keyboard typically. Um, so I just think it's an a, instrument just like any other and if you argue that electric, electronic instruments like that are not real instruments then neither are electric guitars because of obvious reasons. Anyways moving on from that one um, this one I think is fairly unpopular, and that is that a band that changes their style in uh, not always a significant way, but sometimes in a significant way, or any way really, in general, is not necessarily always bad. Granted, there are some bands that have done that, that um, I think it just didn't work. For example, um, I bring up Red once again to kind of demonstrate my point, because of course they were like a symphonic, hard rock, uh, kind of bordering on alternative metal band, I guess, for their first few albums. And then Release the Panic happened, where they tried to do more kind of a pop rock kind of thing. And um, it seems like the majority of fans were not very happy about that. And then in 2017, they released Gone, which was somewhat similar, at least in the way of trying to incorporate some pop elements or some electronics. And, um, while there is still a divide, I feel like fans are more accepting of Gone than they were of Release the Panic. Myself included, I think Release the Panic is easily their weakest album, whereas Gone, like I said earlier, is one of my favorites. And I think a, a band changing their style in some way all comes down to the execution. Because while Release the Panic and Gone were very similar in what they were trying to do, at least they were to me, uh, Gone was executed far better than Release the Panic was. And I feel much the same way uh, for Skillet, even though I don't like them as much anymore as I used to. They went from their kind of symphonic rock kind of sound that they had uh, between like um, Comatose and Awake and Rise and switched to more of an electronic, almost kind of like a, a pop rock, but not quite, uh, although kind of in some songs, kind of sound, and I think that that was executed quite well, and I feel like if it hadn't been, then more fans would not have been happy with it. And you do have some bands, uh, particularly it seems like in metalcore, uh, changing their style quite a bit 
um, in recent years, like Bring Me the Horizon, uh, going for more of a alternative metal, hard rock sound. Same thing happened with um, In Flames, which is not a metalcore band, but it still works. Um, same thing with Memphis Mayfire most recently. They just released uh, a new single, and they released one, I think, six months ago, where they were a metalcore band, and now these two songs are much more along the rock side. And as far as I know, the same thing happened with We Came in As Romans and uh, All That Remains, although I'm not particularly familiar with either of those bands. So correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, that's happening a lot, and while, of course, fans are going to be unhappy, at least some of them, uh, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing as long as it's done well. The last one that I have here um, kind of comes from things that I've heard for all of my life. Not necessarily just recently or just within rock and heavy metal and stuff like that, but uh, also pertaining to those. And that is that the age of a band and how long a band has been around and a band that has a lot of history and a much newer band can both be very good. Uh, so basically, I don't believe that the age of a band is an indication of their quality. Because you always, not even just within rock and heavy metal, in all kinds of music, you always hear about the good old days when music used to be good. Um, and now it's just a whole bunch of crap, basically. And um, while I can understand that to an extent, and I know some people will, you know, if a person grew up with older music, then they are probably going to prefer that over newer music. Uh, that just makes sense, I guess. But personally, I like some bands, uh, mostly bands that are newer, but I've been trying recently to get into some older bands and uh, stuff like that. And I found that um, even though not all of the older bands are exactly necessarily for me, they don't really fit my liking, I guess, like exactly, I can still agree that they are still a good band, and what I heard from them was still good. In much the same way, there are uh, bands that are very new um, that I can listen to and still enjoy. And there are a lot of really great bands that have come out only since the uh, uh, 2000, and even some bands since 2010. Uh, since 2000, you had bands, uh, like I said, like Breaking Benjamin and Red, as well as like um, As I Lay Dying. Sabaton and Insomnium, although Sabaton and Insomnium, I think, started in like the very late 90s, but they released music in the early 2000s or whatever. Basically, there's just a bunch of bands that um, I can't even really begin to talk about because there's so many that came out in the 2000s that are very good. And same thing with the 2010s. Um, Starset, like I said, is one of my favorite bands. I think they're very good. Uh, Brothers of Metal is another one. They released their debut album last year, and they are very good. Follow the Cypher released an album this year, and while it's fairly well on my favorite albums of the year list, I was listening to it earlier today, and I really liked it. As well as uh, Woven War um, was uh, the band that formed after As I Lay Dying broke up back uh, in 2013, and there's just a lot of great bands that are out there um, that are sometimes not even very well known that have only come out recently. So generally I think that, you know, the age of a band uh, does not indicate the quality that they are. I think that back in uh, the last century, even with like rock and heavy metal in like the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, whatever, uh, there were good bands, there were bad bands. Nowadays, there are good bands, there are bad bands. That has always been a thing, but I don't believe that age has much to do with it. But anyways, that's pretty much uh, everything, and that's the last thing that I had to talk about. So let me know what you guys think. If you have, uh, if you share any of these opinions or if you disagree with them, feel free to let me know in the comments and maybe explain to me why you feel the way that you do or if you have any other opinions that you think are unpopular and kind of interesting to think about or whatever. Uh, let me know in the comments below. And uh, that pretty much wraps up this video, so I will see you guys next time.